Hello again, Internet. We are back at Moon Pearl's workshop, and in this video, we are going to be looking at her battle system, her custom battle system. Now, personally, I think um, that this is one of the two best battle systems available for RPG Maker XP, the other one being the Creed EX system that we covered in the previous videos. Um, without the camera assist, I think that Moon Pearl system is far superior. Um, when you add the camera to Creed EX's system, um, it, it's slightly better than this one, but not by much, at least visually speaking. So, what you want to do to get this script is you go to the battle systems tab and you want to download the demo whenever you are using a script a battle script for your game I would suggest that you start working your game from there so let's go ahead and download that and as always let's unzip and load up the project alright unzip and there we go, we can get rid of the zip file and here we go. Now this script, uh, in order for you to modify it or to configure it I should say, it's not really as complex as the menu system. Uh, the only thing that you do need to have is essentially character battlers. If you look here in the actors, Alexis, we have whatever normal character sprite but the battle graphics cannot be the default RTP graphic it needs to follow a certain uh, formula a certain structure and the structure that this script uses is that of holders animated battlers so let's go ahead and show you how to find those and how to integrate them into the system so we look for holder animated battlers and you will go to animated battlers dot wordpress dot com that's where he keeps all of his battle sprites and let's just go ahead and find uh, let's use Terrence this is a character from uh, one of the VX RPG Maker, so let's go ahead and save that. Alright, we can close this for now. And if you'll see here, we have the character file. If you import it into your game engine as is, uh, when the character is loaded up, it will actually have the green background. And we don't want that in the game, so let's go ahead and open that in our image editing software, I use paint.net. Uh, you want to get the magic wand set to tolerance to zero. In your keyboard, you press control and shift. You click on the background color, delete, and save the image. All right, and now we have the character with actual transparency. Let's go ahead and rename the file to something a bit more accessible, like just normal Terrans. Um and you just import the graphic into the battlers section alright so let's just throw it in there and so let's work off a character that we already have here Alexis let's just go ahead and replace his battler graphic with Terrence All right. and so when you go into the battle you will see how the system actually works you'll see that there is a camera that moves back and forth um, there's a little bit of zooming in some cases what I think it's really great about this battle system is the ability that some characters have to I'll go ahead and defend with the bullet guy to launch enemies into the air and that's a variable that you configure like that and that's a variable that you configure in the script section um, 
the this script actually also uses character voices so whenever a character performs an action they will speak out um, let me show you that in the next round And the voices used in the script when you originally get it, um, you can find in the audio folder under the voices folder. You will see that each character has a different voice. Um, let's go into Dorothy, for example, and there you see the voices for attack, dead, dodge, etc. And you will see different uh, files. What the system does is that it uh, randomly selects one of the voices in the folder for each action so when you use a skill it will use this sound file when your character attacks it will use one of the three available sound fi uh, files etc right. so let's go ahead and look at the script itself Again, Moon Pearl with all of her scripts, she organizes them into different sections. So you have scene base, common, etc. And a lot of these are actually present in all of her scripts. So if you look at the manuscript, for example, you'll see MP comments and so on. Uh, the one that we have here is the MP Animated Battlers script. It's the one that's unique to this. And then, of course, the skip title which you can just delete if you don't like skipping the title. Um, as with most scripts, you will not be using most of the coding to configure your script. So anything from arrow base to window battle status, all of this stuff, you, ju you can just ignore that. That doesn't exist for you. Um, that is, of course, unless you're familiar with Ruby scripting, in which case go ahead and take a peek. I'm just gonna go over the configuration of the script. So the first set of configuration variables you can find in the constants-system script. What you'll see first are the constants for poses. You will see 13 poses, a total of 13 poses starting from zero down to 12. I thought that was a curious choice, but um, it works. Idle is for when the character is doing nothing. Defend when you use the defend command. Woozy is when he's uh, affected by a status, struck when he's being hit, etc. Um, the post underscore idle, post underscore defend, etc. Uh, those are pointers to other processes. Uh, that essentially define what the character does. These are for statuses when the character is doing something or not doing anything. Uh, these are more specific and what you'll find um, is that these basically overlap with uh, the previous actions. All right, so um, let's see. We have the Victory, I suppose I should probably open up a character image to show you what they do. So let's go ahead and do Battlers. And where's the one that we just got here? All right. So here we go. So let's go back up. And you'll see here post idle, post defend, etc. Those are the rows in each of your battle, battle character sheets. So post zero actually correspond to the first row, post 1 corresponds to the second row, etc. all the way to post dead, which is constant 12, which actually points to the 13th row, which is the dead character. The 14th row are the credits from Holder, which he puts in his uh, terms that you cannot use his sprites if you take away the name. So. Um, that's why 
there are 13 positions but the total number of rows is defined as 14 as we will see in a little bit so these again correspond to different positions on the sprite sheet uh, in the same way with, you know state battle start battle victory etc damage action kind and so on um, number of frames has to do with columns if you have four columns here it means that your character will have four frames to circulate through so the frame for an attack for example would be the animation for an attack would be this one that we have right here and what the system would do is essentially do frame one frame two frame three and frame four all right so if you want to change that number into something else let's say maybe you want to have eight frames number lock maybe you want to have eight frames what you could do is and I'm going to go ahead and open that in a image editing program again paint.net what you could do and this is usually for when you ha want to have more fluid animations is you could just double the number of images so width is 384 so that would be let's see I'll just go ahead and do calculator because I kind of suck at math horribly 384 times 2 768 768 let me cancel that because I don't want it to be proportional so canvas size don't maintain the ratio 768 pixels wide what you want to do is essentially copy what you have paste it next to it and now you have a sprite sheet with eight frames now how is this useful in any way um, if you have different animations you can have something that's a little bit more fluid um, if you want to have the character for example attack twice what would happen if you use this sprite sheet with the number of frames set to eight is that when the character jumps forward to attack the system will look into this row and the character would attack once then again in the animation and then of course if you want to play around and set it so that the second attack looks different you would essentially have the character do the first attack then the second attack all right but i don't really want to do that so i'm going to go ahead and cancel let's just set this back to four number of rows refers to pretty obviously the number of rows we have 14 rows down here 13 for positions or poses and the last one for character credits that's what is defined here if you have a different number of poses perhaps you have more 15 16 poses maybe you have less maybe you only use a main cough character this would be where you define that number but then you would also have to play around with these poses here if you have a smaller number of posts then you could perhaps double down on some of the elements here so you could set perhaps skill and magic to six if you have instead of 13 positions or 13 animations you have 12 so you would do six and that would work my recommendation is that you uh, stick to the holder system especially if you're starting off cycle rate trail rate trail size and all that stuff has to do with how the character moves um, and how often the frame is updated in the image so if you have a a lower cycle rate you would have an animation that would go from this and then take a while to this and take a while and so on so if you have a higher number and then if you have a lower number then you'll have a faster animation 
right as the character kind of moves back and forward voice volume uh, animation bounce has to do with if you recall in the system when the enemy was launched into the air how high does it bounce when it falls into the floor um, and then the sound effect for when a character dodges right um, I think one of the things that sets Moon Pearl apart from most scripters is precisely how well she comments her scripts right so we look at the second set of configurations we see that we have uh, you know actions per kind etc action weight and so on um, here the animation section between lines 16 and 22 have to do with ranged weapons so if you have any ranged weapons in your database that would be here under weapons you want to make sure that you have the weapon ID right that would be the number here 001 002 etc the weapon ID for ranged weapons you want to make sure that you have it here with an arrow linking to 12 which is the animation for a ranged weapon and then these other skills here that are defined are basically skills uh, and the specific animations per skill so instead of having a single animation per skill going back to the character sprite instead of having say this column uh, this row row number one two three four five six, row number six to be the only skill row you could have uh, you know a skill ID whatever do animation from row 7 animation from row 8 you could set it to uh, an animation from any row right and really as far as the configuration for this script is concerned that's pretty much it um, so let's go ahead and add a new character that's really the only thing left for us to go over and we call this character whatever we give the character a sprite we give him a battler and I'm actually considering giving him a normal battler so that you guys see what happens when you use a normal battler instead of uh, one of the holder ones let's go ahead and do that you know this old guy battler right and let's set him into the party edit and let's put whatever into the party right. and so when we go into the battle you will see whatever back here and what the system is doing is essentially treating the one image that we said as if it had different frames All right. so let's go ahead and get rid of that and then set an actual holder battler as animation let's set uh, a monster that works and we go ahead and get into a fight and you'll see the character that we've created back here on the fourth position we attack I'll just leave you with this battle to carry it out That one didn't cause any damage because we, of course, didn't assign a weapon to him. And that's it for Moon Pearl's battle system. Next time around, we'll look at her party interaction system. I'll see you then.